Hello everyone! Welcome to our Reading and Writing Skills class. Hello everyone! Now we will continue our discussion about the different patterns of development. So let's have first a recap. Last week, we discussed about narration and description. When we say narration, it tells a story about when, where, and what happened. And when we say description, it gives information of what a person, an object, a place, or a situation is like, which appeals to our senses. This week, we will study about definition, exemplification, and classification. So let's start with definition. When we say definition, it explains a concept, term, or subject. Its main purpose is not only to tell what something means or is, but also what something does, what something is used for, and what something looks like. It is consists of three parts. The term, concept, or subject to be defined, the general class to which it belongs, and the characteristics that differentiate it from the other members of its class. This pattern of development is commonly used in the sciences, humanities, and business. Let's read the given example. Do you know the concept being defined? If your answer is greenhouse effect, then you are correct. The greenhouse effect is a term being defined in the paragraph. It is clearly explained through the details on how the process occurs. In writing a definition paragraph, we can use the following signal words. There are three types of definition. It is the formal definition, informal definition, and extended definition. When we say formal definition, the meaning of a word consists of three parts. The term, the part of speech to which it belongs, and the traits or characteristics that set it apart from the other term in that class. For example, the term freedom. The part of speech is noun. The definition, the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. If we're going to form the formal definition of this term, we can say that freedom is a noun which refers to the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. The next type of definition is informal definition. When we say informal definition, the meaning of a word is explained using known words or examples to define an unknown term. These definitions may be synonyms or antonyms introduced by or, in other words, or like. The writer uses known words or examples to explain an unknown term. Let's take a look at this example. Freedom, also referred to as liberty or independence, is a state people reach when they are free to think and do whatever they please. The third type of definition is extended definition. The meaning of an idea or word has components of both formal and informal definitions, but is presented in a longer paragraph format, just like what is stated in the given example. True freedom means the ability to think, feel, say, or act however one chooses. It is a state where the bars of bondage do not exist. Unfortunately, the widening gap between the haves and have-nots means that some are now shackled by their lack of education. Americans can attain real freedom when everyone has the same educational opportunities. Aside from the different types of definition, we also have to understand the different techniques in writing a definition essay. So let's start with analysis. When we say analysis, it is the process of breaking down a concept into its constituent parts. Let's take a look at the given example. Can you see how the term guitar is explained by identifying its constituent parts? Now let's move on to the next technique which is collocations. When we say collocations, these are the words or expressions that are usually almost immediately associated with the concept you are trying to define. Meaning to say, these words or expressions are usually located or associated together. 
Let's take a look at the given example. If you can see, the word passion is collocated to the words love and last. The next technique is comparison. When we say comparison, it is associating the word or expression that you are trying to define with something else not necessarily synonymous with it. Please read the example silently. Do you know in what word is the word passion being compared? Yes, your answer is correct. It is coffee. The next technique is contrast. When we say contrast, it is understanding how at least two similar concepts are different from each other. And it is obviously stated in the given example. The next technique is etymology. It explains the evolution of a word or how it has come to be. If you can see in the given example, it tells about the evolution and where the word passion came from. The next technique is exemplification and illustration. In this technique, exemplification is done by giving examples, while illustration is by giving an example and elaborating on the concept. Just like what is stated on the given example. The next technique is extended definition. When we say extended definition, it is the personal interpretation of an author to an abstract and multifaceted concept. It goes beyond denotation and connotation in which it draws upon the author's own perspective of the world. Please read the given example silently. Another technique is function. It is knowing the purpose of a word or concept. Please read the given example. The next technique is synonyms. When we say synonyms, it is a single word or phrase that shares almost the same meaning with the concept you are trying to define. Please read silently the given example. The next one is class. When we say class, it is putting the topic in a broad category to explain the term, just like what is stated in the given example. Lastly, Another technique that we could use is negation. In this technique, the writer first says something that is not and then says what it is, just like in the given example. Are there any questions with regards to definition? Now let's move on to another pattern of development which is exemplification. So what is an exemplification pattern of development? It provides examples and illustrations to further clarify or explain the concept or subject matter. It also presents a general statement that provides specific and concrete examples to expound on the main idea. In this pattern, it shows, proves, or explains a general idea or point by using examples. Let's take a look at this example. Please read this silently. In the given example, the paragraph expounds on the main idea which is stated in the first sentence through specific examples. The examples, which are the surgical procedures and their purpose, support the main idea. Did you get it? There are different signal words that could be used in writing a pattern of development using exemplification. In writing using an exemplification pattern of development, we can use the following signal words. Are there any questions? Now let's move on to the next pattern of development, which is classification. In this pattern of development, things are divided into groups, classes, or categories. Ideas are organized into divisions based on criteria or standards. The group or category should have a single basis of classification and the grouping or categorization must suit the purpose. In a classification paragraph, 
Separate items are grouped into categories according to shared characteristics. Let's take a look at this given example. Please read this silently. Is it obvious that it uses the classification pattern of development? This paragraph presents the four branches of the armed forces of the Philippines. It provides details about each branch, such as function, date of establishment, and number of active personnel. In writing a classification pattern of development, we can use the following signal words. That's all for today for our lesson this week. Next week, we're going to study again another patterns of development. Bye!